Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes, the National School Sports Champion. This edition of Get Physical looks at competitive sport. I suppose you could say I know a bit about that. But competition isn't just about elite athletes and gold medals. Anyone can learn vital skills from competing, as you'll see. An inter-school match for the girls' first 11 at the Manor School in Mansfield. One of the Manor team's rising stars is Alicia. Um, all began in year five at my junior school, where the um, Manor School like does inter-competitions, where all the junior school in the area come and they can play. And I got into it where the local club, which was North Knotts, like sent a representative down and at the end of the tournament, the presentation, there was like, you know, come to a hockey club if you've enjoyed it and stuff like that. So I started um, going down there and I was there for about two seasons and went through the juniors level and the ladies level and um, got put through to county and then Midlands. I'd like to go to the nationals because that's where you can get picked up by England selectors and eventually represent them in the Olympics. In past decades, attitudes to competitive sport in schools have sometimes been negative, failing to nurture talented young sportsmen and women. But Alicia's generation and the ones that follow stand to benefit from major changes in the way competitive sport is organised in schools and beyond. A new national schools competition framework extends plans to develop athletes at all levels. Multi-skills festivals with an emphasis on fun in Key Stages 1 and 2 lead to multi-sport competitions in Key Stages 2 and 3. By Key Stages 3 and 4, students should have access to inter-school leagues and competitions. In parallel with this, a national network of competition managers is being appointed. Rowena Gerrit is one of the first to take up her post. The role of the competition manager essentially is to streamline competition within the partnership that we work. Uh, we, we work with the national governing bodies of sport, we work with the Youth Sport Trust, with the National Council of School Sport and we are here solely for the competitive side of sport. The manager's brief is to work with all concern to ensure clear pathways from the simplest Key Stage 1 festival to the UK school games and perhaps even the Olympics. But to make the most of new opportunities, schools need to ensure that competition is integrated, appropriate and inclusive. Integration is important for talented athletes like Alicia, the hockey player, or these rugby players from the manor. School work, school sport and club training combine to place heavy demands on them. The JAE, that's the Junior Athlete Education Programme, can help. As well as competing in high competitions, you know, I do have to have um, all my schoolwork and I do have to concentrate on that. And that's where JAE mentoring comes in. And that's to do with your parents, your coaches and your teachers. And they all work together to help you um, work out your life management and stuff. I think it's a little bit easier for me because I'm in sixth form. Uh, I mean, I, I get some free periods in which I can like do my work. But it, it, I mean, it is hard, you know, I've been able to, at spare, at spare second you get, you're just trying to cram some work in. Just as importantly, good integration will ensure that school club links are effective and coordinated. I play with Manor School. I got playing, started playing with Mansfield. Um, I, I'm at Not Sink Star BNLD, and um, I'm at my last year at Leicester Tigers Academy. Like the Manor School, King Edward VII School in Kings Lynn has a wide range of sporting ability amongst its students. Because we're thinking about competition, I want to think about how we will deal with winning or losing. And the ethos embraces competition, even within lessons. Now we're going to look at how we deal with competition. And competition, we need to think about offence and defence. Five players here against five players there. We're 
Within Key Stage 4 itself, what we try to do is operate something called sport education. It's a, a league-based system, and what you attempt to do is promote the things you're looking for from each group, and you can adapt that depending on whether it's a very able group, uh, a very well-behaved group, or the other end of the spectrum, obviously. Um, and what you do is reward the things you're looking for. It may well be awarded points on top of their scores in winning games, for the ability to apply the appropriate tactics. And then over a six week block, they'll uh, have a position in the league um, and the competition drives them to do the things that you want them to do within that league. So it's quite an effective you know, way of teaching at that age group. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy using uh, competition within my lessons, it's fantastic. Um, I find that it motivates children massively because they want to achieve, they want to win. Who doesn't want to win? Time out calls! We are winning, but I want to go for a man for man because I really don't want them to get any points back. Zach and then Zach at the back of the ring. OK, guys, you've had instructions, let's see it happen then, let's go! If you have competition on an individual level, um, it's fantastic because rather than comparing to other people, they compare with themselves, which is something we try and promote heavily at this school. So competition at all levels, whether it be against yourself or against other people, is clearly uh, an advantageous tool in physical education. And competition is also a remarkably flexible tool with applications at class, intra-school and inter-school levels. There's two galas with King Edward, the in-house gala and the main schools gala, which competes against the high schools in the area. To prepare them for that, we normally um, start them off racing each other in their own ability groups and then build them up from there so that they're ready for the gala when it comes around. Um, normally by this age, that they'll already be in a club. If they're not, then we pass them on um, phone numbers and we attend trials for the Warriors Swimming Club, which is our local swimming club. And there we have um, at least five children already who are swimming nationally and at least six who are swimming regionally. The King Edward swimmers train hard, but as with all young athletes, it's important to ensure that what they're doing is appropriate. As an experienced director of enrichment and deputy head teacher, Paul Tebay monitors them and makes changes where necessary. The swimmers, for example, train four mornings a week from six till eight o'clock. They get to school later than uh, they should do. A little bit of allowance made for that, but of course they're, they're, they're getting very tired, so we need to have a look at how we can balance their lifestyle in and around uh, you know, what they're doing in sport. Uh, and that's a, an important part of what we do, and that programme we think we've got in place and it's working reasonably well. In much the same way, schools need to ensure that competition is appropriate to students' age and stage of development, that it's enjoyable and includes disabled students and others who in the past might have been excluded. It used to be a, either you would chase them into doing it or you would ignore them and send them to the bottom of the field with a ball and let them kick it around in their own time. But now I think we're much more imaginative sort of activities and programmes are being put forward. King Edwards takes cricket seriously with training through the winter and for pupils with special needs and the disaffected, table cricket offers an equally competitive alternative. Four runs. Six runs. There's a national competition uh, for uh, table cricket. It starts in regional rounds and then they go on to the national final. Um, at Lords every year, um, and yes, it's serious business. Table cricket has proved to be both competitive and inclusive for the school. But as with the swimming, Paul T. Bay constantly reviews what is appropriate. Table cricket, that isn't necessarily a very physical activity, and with the current health agenda, we need to look at that. And with that in mind, the school is widening the options to include activities as diverse as judo and cheerleading. Two runs. In 
Ensuring that competition is inclusive is the third key component of using it successfully. Only a tiny minority have the ability or the desire to aim for the Olympics, but every student should have the opportunity to compete in some way so they can learn the life skills that competition teaches. Rowena Gerrett, the competition manager in Brighton and Hove, has organised a school sports festival with inclusion as a key objective. I think essentially part of the competition manager's role and the national competition framework for young people, really important part of that is to widen participation. It's to reduce the over-competition of the top echelon really within schools uh, and to provide opportunities for those children who wouldn't necessarily take part. These youngsters are enjoying a taster session of beach volleyball, a sport they've never played before. It's one of several taster sessions running alongside competitions and tournaments between local schools. Not far from the beach, over at Dorothy Stringer High School, the Stringer team is gearing up for the Year 9 Inter-Schools Basketball Tournament. It's also part of the festival and participation is widened by having teams of mixed ability and mixed sex. For some, it's the first time they've played the sport in an inter-schools competition, and even the warm-up leaves them buzzing with anticipation. I think it's amazing, it's really, it's really fun. It's like the first time I've played in like a match, and it's just, it's just really, really fun. You know? it's, it's, it's good because you want to win. It's a great atmosphere here today, and yeah, it's really good. It's fun and like, competitive. A couple of little rules. First of all, you have to enjoy yourself. That is the important bit. And there must at all times be at least two girls on the court. The key, perhaps, to, to involving everybody is to have tiers of competition. So those children that do play at a high level, they still have the opportunity to do so um, through their club um, and through certain competitions at school. But we have other levels of, of competition that enable the less able um, or the le just less experienced to take part. Competition in school sport can be used in many ways, but at its best it is always integrated and appropriate, taking account of students' age, ability and needs. Inclusive, with diverse opportunities that widen participation for all, including disabled students. Challenging, extending students' physical and sporting skills. And it's also a tool for teaching life skills like winning and losing that have a value way beyond the sporting arena. At the end of the first Brighton & Hove School Sports Festival, it's a good result for Dorothy Stringer. We've just won our match. I feel exhilarated. It's early days, but the drive towards a high-quality school sport national competition framework by 2010 is gathering momentum.